good morning from the second age of reason. Some say, stay close to your friends. Some say, stay closer to your enemies. And there's reasons for that. And um, as a matter of fact, I have my alarm clock in the morning set to an annoying conservative radio station. And they always wake up with vinegar and vitriol every morning, you know, spewing forth their blather that is like incomprehensible and almost, um, I don't know, it's just, just, I just feel the hate, I feel the disgust, and it makes me wake up right away. I can't sleep with that sort of thing spewing in the background, so I immediately turn it off and wake up, and then I'm in a mood for the day. And so, moving onward, when I was young, I found out about some uh, author named Ayn Rand and her books. Somebody said, you should read Atlas Shrugged, and you should read some of her stuff. It's pretty good. And so, um, I set about to uh, look at it back when I was in the high school age, and I read through much of it until college age, and it kind of set the foundation for why I'm a libertarian socialist today. The more you read, the more you learn from it. And it's important to to subscribe to people you don't agree to, and you don't agree with, and to understand where they're coming from, to hear their arguments, so that your arguments can be so much better. At least you know their line of reasoning. You know where they're coming from, where they're going to, and you can head them off the pass. As far as specifics, I'll leave that up to you. But I'll show you, like, the first book that I had of Ayn Rand's, because I was lazy, I said I was going to read her first book, I believe, that came out. It's called Anthem. Anthem. And the thing that got me is this... This, this was written in the 1930s. It's a sci-fi book. And it, it, having been brought up in the parochial schools, this is, this is so interesting. The first lines that it opens is, here, here goes. It is a sin to write this. It is a sin to think words no others think. To put them down on a paper no others are to see. It is base and evil. It is as if we were speaking alone to no ears but our own. Now that's a good opening for a book. It's almost as good as it was the best of times, it was the worst of times. We all know where that book came from. So, <coughs> you, you read through that. It's a pretty good sci-fi book. I'd recommend it. it, it as a little while, you figure out why the person talks the way they do, because they don't talk quite normal. Well, it's supposed to be in the vast future somewhere, but that's part of it. But there's more to it. And you can tell it's kind of um, the, the proto-version of the Atlas Shrugged idea coming down the road. Now, Atlas Shrugged is this book here. And the interesting thing is, um, I was told that uh, the best way to do it is to read it from the middle onwards, because it's pretty boring in the beginning, talking about things like fuel shortages, and shortages of this, and problems with the government, and problems with transportation. Oh, it sounds kind of familiar. And it does get more interesting later on. So I, I read the thing. I read the book several times throughout college. And... Um, I started out, started out, you know, thinking, oh, this is the way, this is like a roadmap to the future somehow. You know, the people states of America and all that. And um, it kind of is. And so, and so I read it over several times. And he, there's a chief character in there, John Gold. And he's, I think he's kind of the spokesperson for Ayn Rand and her beliefs. So, this is, I recommend reading this. As a matter of fact, it's coming out in a movie. 
soon. I think this has the first third of this book. Of course, and you can have the second third and a third third, and even a fourth third. So um, if this becomes a movie, and it has, it's definitely on my list. Just because I don't entirely agree with the author doesn't mean I don't like the material sometimes. It's a work of fiction, of course. Um, the other thing about... The other thing... <coughs> the other thing about Ayn Rand, which you may find interesting, is that she had certain little groupies. And like, here's a book called Capitalism, The Unknown Ideal. It's interesting, too. Um, it's This is more of uh, a treatise where it kind of goes through and describes, you know, capitalism versus other things. And it makes pretty good arguments overall uh, in the context in which it was written. But I think the thing that is very telling about it is with additional articles written by, and it has her groupies in it. And who are they? Well, let's take a look. I don't know if you can see that, but it says Nathaniel Brandon, Alan Greenspan, and Robert Hessen. Alan Greenspan? Well, yes, as a matter of fact, Alan Greenspan was one of her disciples. I just thought I'd mention that because it comes in uh, handy if you know if you know where Alan Greenspan's coming from, then you know why he does the things he does. Another good book, The Virtue of Selfishness, talking about why it's good for everybody to be selfish and greedy, although it's called rational selfishness. It's a little bit different than crazy, insane selfishness that loots the entire planet. But they would probably say, this is the modus operandi of the current Wall Street paradigm. Okay, next. The Romantic Manifesto. Just a thing about art, the reason for art and what inspires artists. Pretty good. Um, the New Left and the Anti-Industrial Revolution. This is interesting. Anti-Industrial Revolution. Anti-Industrial Revolution is American business now who is now celebrating the virtue of selfishness, they are the anti-industrial revolution. The industrial uh, might has been moved offshore to other countries, communist countries who understand how important it is. So this has come to fruition. Thank you, Ayn Rand, for telling us how it's done. Um, this is a philosophy book. An Introduction to Objectivist Epistemology. This is, tells you all about how A equals A. And that's very important for all of us to know um, its identity, A equals A. And once you understand that, and you can read it 120 pages of A equals A, you will be enlightened by her philosophy. And, of course, for people like us now, in the 21st century, we have to have something for the new intellectual. Some of us are intellectuals and others of us are not. Some of us are moochers and some of us are not. And some of us are libertarian socialists who have thought through things to their final conclusion a little more than other people of the prior century. So that's all I have to say for now. Basically, it is make sure that um, if you're going to go out and rant about stuff, that you study the opposition. You read their materials. You have discussions with them. You just don't come out and spout a bunch of um, gibberish and sound like an idiot with emotional pleas and stuff like that. It doesn't go over very well. But I thought, you know, I would just show you that a lot of my stuff has inspiration from Ayn Rand. It's just that some of us have taken away something a little different than one might expect. So, until later, be seeing you.